Hi, and welcome back to day two of our 12 days of Christmas. And today, I'm going to be talking about how to prepare your kids before they meet Santa. Now, you might think, well, Michelle, what is it to prepare for? You show up, they take pictures with Santa, tell them their life story, and move on. Well, wait a minute, because that's not the case for all kids. So, tis the season to be jolly, but maybe not so much when it comes to the time for your child to meet Santa. Santa. You might have been excited this holiday season to get that cute picture of your kid, your child or your kids sitting on Santa's lap telling him what they want for Christmas, but this may not go as planned. Many kids are afraid of Santa, and that is the truth. Many kids, I remember back in the day, my daughter, the first year I took her to see Santa, I want to say she was about a year old. Oh, she wasn't having it at all. So some kids are afraid of Santa. So as soon as it's their turn in line to meet jolly old St. Nick, they freak out. Well, if you are wanting some smiles and the pictures that your child or your kids or your child take with Santa and not a meltdown, here are some key tips on preparing your little ones for a smooth, calm, and successful visit with Santa. Number one, introduce your child to Santa, okay? Get your child excited about Santa at the beginning of the holiday season so that he or she already feels like they know him. Tell stories about him. You know, tell them about how he brings presents to all the good little girls and boys all around the world. And you can even share some of your memories of what Santa meant to you when you were a kid or as an adult. I, I don't judge, okay? And so visuals are also helpful. So watch age-appropriate movies that portray Santa in a positive light, such as the original Santa Claus is coming to town, the Santa Claus, or Miracle on 34th Street, because who doesn't like that, right? Read books such as Twas the Night Before Christmas, or one of my favorite, The Berenstain Bears Meet Santa Bear. And of course, it can't hurt to suggest that your child write a wish list that you can send off to the North Pole. Put, help your child put a stamp on that letter. Go to the post office, because I remember doing that when we were kids. Go to the post office, you drop it in the box, and you are so excited because you know that you're going to get a letter back from Santa. And that was like the most exciting thing as a child. Okay, you know what? I know it's late now, but I think next year I think I'm going to write a letter to Santa. So, <laughs> remember though, from your child's perspective, those safe, non-threatening representations of Santa are popular opposites of st from standing face to face with a six foot tall, three hundred pound, j uh, jelly uh, belly jiggling, ho ho ho, and white haired covered stranger. This can be scary for your little people, okay? Or your little person. Number two, avoid weekends. If you can arrange to take your child at a time when there's shorter lines, less crowds, and a shorter wait time, your child will have a better experience. Waiting even 10 minutes, being dragged through the maze of velvet ropes, it can be tough for kids, right? And plus, as they're standing in line, they're seeing Santa, and they have so all that time to stand there and get themselves all worked up over something that they think is going to be. Number three, consider your child's schedule. Select a time for your visit when your child is at their brightest their best mood, you know, so that you won't be going during nap time or close to bedtime. There are parents out there who wonder why their three-year-old is pitching a fit about going up to see Santa at 9.30 at night. Well, guess what? That child is tired. That's why. So if you can arrange your schedule for a well-timed morning visit, you'll have much better results, okay? Number four, sugar high. Mm -mm, it's a no-no. Try to avoid sweets, ice cream, sugary cookies, candies, and sodas in a couple hours before your visit with Santa. And we all see how sugar affects our children's moods, right? Been down that road. So an apple, some crackers, a string cheese as a snack will help you have a better visit. And hungry kids are likelier to um, to act out. So if you go and your child is, if their stomach is empty, they're going to act a plum fool. You know why? Because they don't care about Santa. They really don't care about you. At that particular moment, they are just hungry. Number five, what not to say. Be careful not to paint a scary picture of Santa ahead of time. If you prep your child by saying, don't be afraid. Santa's not going to hurt you. You, you introduce a possibility that may never have occurred to that child. Instead, talk about how fun it'll be and show your child a picture of one of their siblings or a cousin or even you when you went to go see Santa and you were sitting on, on his lap. So here's some words and phrases that you should try to avoid saying. Now, don't cry. Don't be afraid. 
Santa is not scary. That is not going to help your little Johnny or your little Susie. It is suggested that you do a lot of, of, of laughing and smiling and just, you know, really pumping them up. And you want to say things like, this is so much fun. I like Santa. Oh, I love Santa. Santa is so nice. Look at all the pretty lights. If you're going to program your child, do it with positive concepts that set the tone for the impending visit. Number six, go to go at a slow uh, go at a slow pace, meaning your child's pace, not yours, your child's. Allow your child to get warmed up to the situation on their own terms. This may mean a couple pre-visits, watching Santa from afar. Let me put a pin right here because that's what I did for my daughter. Until she decided she was ready, we just, we went by the Santa booth, but we didn't go to the Santa booth. And same thing with the Easter Bunny. But when she decided she was ready, then we went. I didn't move in my time. I had to move in her time. Before your child willingly gets up into onto Santa's lap, that's fine. So your goal is slow and steady with no trauma, okay? However, long it takes your child to get seated is not a reflection on you being a good or bad parent. Every child is different. Every Santa is different. Bells, lights, Christmas music, and this huge red suited hairy guy are holiday traditions that we are that we were taught by our families, okay? It's very unfamiliar territory to your little ones. So enjoy the process. Also, children's perception of time is very different from ours. So walk away, do some window shopping, and return 20 minutes later. Well, depending on how old they are, they may think it's a whole nother day. I don't know. Like, they could think it was hours later. Who knows? But just go off, do something else, and come back. And they may be in a much better mood. <laughs> to a child... It's now, I just said that, it's now a whole new day. So try again. Perhaps your child will get close enough for a high five or a fist bump this time rather than just watching from afar. Keep working at it. Get a little closer each time. The key is, is not to let yourself get all worked up, okay? Be Santa's helper. Talk to Santa one-on-one -on -one to help your child grow more accustomed to him. Have your spouse, a family member, or trusted friend distract your child for a moment while you have a little chat with Santa. Explain your child's fears and offer suggestions on how he can reassure your child. Tell him the name of your child, of your family pet or your child's favorite toy or activity so that he can bring it up in conversation. He can say something like, your mom told me you've been doing so well in soccer this year, right? Or mommy said you have a dog named Barkley. Why don't you tell me about him? Number eight. Parents and siblings. If you have older children, allow your little ones to watch their older siblings as they visit with Santa. Let your child assimilate the concept that visiting with Santa is fun on their own. If you do not have older children, when you get to the front of the line, ask if your child can watch a few other children as they visit Santa before you and your child take your turn. Number nine, be a good example. Let your child watch you. Y yeah, I said you. No, no, no. Don't look around. I said you. Go up and greet and hug Santa. Now, I'm not saying you have to sit on his lap. Well, unless he's cute, but I'm not saying you have to sit on his lap. But go and let your child watch you greet Santa and give Santa a hug. And if you feel comfortable, you know, and you're able to, because I'm going to keep it real, you know, some of us are a little thick in the britches and we may not need to be sitting on Santa's lap. So, if, you know, if, if Santa will allow it and you feel comfortable with it, if you want to, sit on Santa's lap. But the key is to allow your child to see you having a great interaction with him, okay? You can sit next to Santa for a moment so your child understands you're sing signaling that it is a, <coughs> excuse me, that it is a safe situation for him or her. Call your child in, onto your lap. Okay, I said your lap. Call your child up. Hey, Susie, come on, sit up, and then have them sit on your lap, okay? And then you want to place your child on your knee, the, the knee furthest away from Santa, and you could, because you're using that as a safety buffer between Santa and your child. Perhaps getting the candy cane treat is the next great achievement. Take the candy and say your goodbyes. Success at this stage may be having a shorter happy experience, and that is absolutely fine. Next time, the child may even go up alone as long as they see a parent's reassuring face is close by. By age four, most children will go willingly to Santa, and they understand the request and receive concept by them. Okay? 
Number 10, do's and don'ts. So as a quick recap and some extra pointers, here are some recommendations to help your child ease into the Santa visit and make it a good experience for everybody. So do read books with pictures of Santa to your child days before your visit. It gets them used to sing Jolly Old St. Nick. Don't have picture day with Santa at the mall on the weekends, okay? Crowds, chaos, and Christmas just don't mix well, especially when you have little people involved. Do take them a few days earlier to see the layout of Santa's house and to show them other kids interacting with Santa. Don't be uptight and stressed. A child can sense that you're fe what you're feeling and they will react in the same way, okay? Do dress them in comfortable clothing, the fancy dress and bow tie. Hold on one second. May look cute, but they may not be comfortable adding to the stress of your child. Now, if your child's already stress-free and they love Santa and you want to put on a cute little dress or some slacks with a cute little shirt and a nice shirt and a bow tie for your little boys and so you can take a nice picture, that's absolutely fine. But if they are not at that level, please don't do that. Don't don't add more stress than needs, needs to be. Do talk to them. When you're in line, talk about how much fun you're going to have and maybe glance over the book that you shared earlier. Do distract your child if you hear another child with Santa that is crying because you will hear that. Start singing a Christmas carol and have them join in. Don't let someone else grab your child to put him or her on Santa's lap. The grabbing scares a child, and when it's a stranger doing it, it impacts the fear. Now, when I say stranger, usually when you go to see Santa, Santa has a little helper. And that little helper, he or she, they're only doing their job. They really are. But your child doesn't know that helper. So for that, that helper to come and get your little Susie or Johnny by the hand, lifting them up, put them on Santa's lap that may not work very well. You be the one, and you can just say, you know what, if you don't mind, I, I'm, I'm going to put my child up on Santa's lap because I'm trying to get them accustomed to this visit, and if you do it, it's just going to set them all off, and they'll understand. Heck, I'd understand. Don't force a child to sit on Santa's lap if they don't want to. Okay, it sends the wrong message, and it could make your child fear Santa in the future. If they're if they are falling out, and, and, and they're like, no, and they're really pulling away. Don't force it. Don't force it. Say, okay, well, why don't you stand right here and tell Santa what you want for Christmas? Now, if the child still doesn't want to, to cooperate, then you just say, you know what, thank you, and, and then go on. But if they're willing to stand there and tell Santa what they want, then roll with that. And then don't yell or get angry with your child because they're upset. That confuses them because they know you as their protector. And they're thinking, okay, well, why is mommy and or daddy getting upset with me? Because I'm afraid of this jolly Saint, Saint Nick sitting up in this big chair with this big white beard. You know, and that, that's very confusing. Do comfort your child if they're upset and tell them it's okay. Leave the area right away. And don't panic, okay? Remember, there's always next year. So if you go to take your child this year and they just are not having it, it's all right. There's always next year. All in all, don't expect perfection. Parents tend to have a high expectation at this time of the year for how everything should go. But don't be disappointed if the photo doesn't work out that way because it very well may not. You, The way that you had hoped. What now seems like a missed opportunity for a perfect picture with Santa may become a special photo in future years because it captured that visit to Santa. Happy holidays. Y'all don't stress your kids out. Let them go at their, at their own pace, okay? Because what, what bothers me the most is when I am at the mall, because like I said, my daughter hasn't been that age in a very long time and, and I see Susie and Johnny I mean they are falling out on the floor yelling because they truly don't want to go but the parents are just dragging them along and come on no don't do that don't do that because number one the people in line don't want to hear it Santa doesn't need that kind of stuff going on in his space and your child doesn't need to be uh, worked up in that way. They just don't need that. Okay. So thank you so much to my newest subscribers. Thank you so much to those of you that happen to be just 
cruising on by and you saw this video and decided to check it out, go ahead and, and hit that subscribe button, tap that bell, because this is just day two of my 12 days of Christmas, and I don't want you to miss anything. For those of you that continue to support me in all that I do, I love you guys. I love you all to the moon and back, and y'all know the drill. There's nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing at all. I want you all to go out there, have a great experience with your child, your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors, whoever's kids that you may have. I want you all to have a great experience as you go and visit Santa. Until, day, until tomorrow, take care, and we'll be back with day three.